Hi guys, this is Sai Kumar Kortiwada. In this video, we will learn about our Angular 15 features. So, just recently, couple of days back, Angular 15 has been released and it has an awesome features which has introduced in Angular 15. I feel like when Angular is growing on, our work for the developers will reduce a lot with lot of syntactical changes and lot of things which you can do on a small type of codes itself. So, I'll show you some of the features which are introduced in Angular 15 and I'll explain you how they are useful to us and how they improve the performance and developer friendly. So let me quickly jump into the slides. So let me go to the slide. These are the features which are majorly introduced in Angular 15. So first one is stable standalone components API. As we discussed in our Angular 14 features, standalone components has been introduced, but they were not completely stable. Now in Angular 15, now all the components which are standalone will support all the Angular features like routing, importing the different modules, importing the different components and also automatic imports. So this standalone components are very useful in Angular and Angular gave more support for the standalone components and they will be following the same pattern in the further implementations and later on we may be expecting the module structure may be removed and only the standalone components may be using. That may be the expectation in the future for Angular but for now Angular standalone components will support along with angular modular structure that is ng module so both will be supported but if you want to use a standalone components you can go with standalone components and if you want to go with modular components then you can go with the modular components and the second feature is table image directive so in angular 14 there is an image directive which was introduced by angular but it is not completely stable in this release this stable image directive has been introduced and it is completely stable with high performance and, th and there is something called as automatic imports so we'll talk about the automatic imports with an example and let's hold on for that and also material components has been migrated and some of the components were rewritten to adapt for material design components so MDC are material design components which are given by material design and we are adopting our uh, material components with MDC components. They have been rewritten most of the components and also refactored some of the components angular material components and there is a lot of changes in the CLI improvements and also router changes. We'll talk all of them in detail. So let me go to the next slide and here you can see standalone components. So if you see here there is lazy loading routing and component injection has been introduced. In our lazy loading you can use something like this. We can create our routes and just use that routes for our app routes and just use that routes to load our component itself and if you see here this is a standalone component and here you can see the imports of the custom component and also you are using that image grid which is a custom component and that is injected in your standalone template component in this way standalone component can be used without depending on your modular components so let me quickly go into the next slide image directive so if you see we can use an image directive which is again a standalone component which is created by angular team that is ng optimized image. This can be used in two ways either by importing in your ng module or importing at a component level that is modular level and component that is standalone component level. So now this ng optimized image what it can do? It will decrease the load time and the largest contentful paint will be loaded as soon as possible. If you can see here, there are two cases. So whatever it is visible on the UI, that will be considered as a largest contentful paint. So if you see, it is a normal one. It is in ng directive that means image directive so that it will be loaded as soon as possible once the image is loaded onto your ui and it will increase lot of performance and they have tested on different types of angular applications and they made a conclusion they have decreased the 75 percent of load time for largest contentful paint and it helps the users to load your application very fast so let me go to the next slide router changes so in our previous 
routings so we usually go with can activate guard routings so whenever you are writing a guard routings you usually create a service and you will inject in that can activate instead of doing all that just use your service and get some specific methods which will return true or false with an arrow operator itself so in this case you already have the auth service and that auth service will not depend on the can activate directly you can call that service and the methods and which should return true or false here usually we do in this way so we should create a can activate service and that service should be having one can activate method and it should return something like a get login status or any of their methods which should return true or false instead of doing all this extra stuff we can directly inject that particular service in our routing itself and this method it should return true or false so we can avoid creating the other file services files and creating all the extra stuff instead of doing that it's a very simple format to use for a developer and also there is a lazy loading for standalone components we can just load the components by using default export and let me go to the mdc components in material so now they are following the material design based components and also if you want to use the previous versions of angular material components then you can use legacy components by importing the legacy hyphen some component name and let me go to the next one that is the configuration changes so now in the latest up updates ivy is a default engine from angular 15 so in the previous versions we have a enable ivy property where you can use it as a true or false if you want to use it you can make it as true if you don't want to use it you can make it as false now that property is completely removed from your ts configuration file because ivy is the default engine for our angular 15 and upcoming versions now what is the node version we should have we should have minimum of these versions like 14.20.x 16.13.x or 18.10.x versions you should have in your local system otherwise you cannot use angular 15 version and typescript version should be 4.8 or greater otherwise you cannot use angular 15 so these are the prerequisites which you need to know about angular 15 and now automatic imports and cli improvements so if you see automatic imports are something like in the previous versions whenever you are writing a selector and you cannot import that particular selector directly in your modules or in your components now we are using a standalone components i can use a particular selector inside my template and if you want to use that i need to import that particular template so for that sake they gave automatic imports so how it works let me go to the other slide and you can see it is it will work like this so just by importing the particular component it will import that particular url on the top you can see standalone foo component has been imported so that is how the advantage of a quick imports from language services of angular and now coming to the cli changes there is something called as ng new component component name and hyphen hyphen standalone this option has been introduced in angular 15 previously in angular 14 you have to mention standalone colon true inside the component instead of doing that whenever you are creating a component you can give an option like standalone if you give hyphen hyphen standalone it will create your component with the standalone property as true and there is one more change whenever we are doing ng new for angular 15 so it will not give you polyfills test.es and environment files you can avoid that creation because as the boilerplate does not require all the stuff and every project may not require all the stuff if you want it to configure you can just go out to angular.json and inside the polyfills array you can just add all your dependencies all your environment files if required so they have removed most of the undependent code or undependent files from your creation of a boilerplate code so that are the CLI improvements which they did where you can just work with the components standalone components create your own libraries and inject the elements create the angular elements web components everything can be done very easily that is what the expectation of angular in the further release so hope there are no much breaking changes in angular 15 it's very free to migrate from angular 14 to 15 and i'll make a video to migrate from angular 14 to 15 in the upcoming videos stay tuned hope you like my explanation if you like my video like share subscribe to my channel for more updates signing off thank you